guys, Bounder Divide here with PML and today we're going to be doing a start to finish track using the new Deep Premium Volume 7 pack and we're going to be doing everything completely from scratch. The only thing is I have already selected out some sounds from the Deep Premium Volume 7 uh, just to save some time and then I've also paired a little bit of MIDI also again to save some time I don't want to be spending like four hours on this. So yeah let's uh, get started. Okay so I'm going to start just with building out the drum loop. So let's just first choose our BPM. I think I'm going to go for around 120, 123, something like that. And the first thing we're doing is kick drum. Put down our kick. So you can see here we're putting down a kick on uh, each quarter note here. And I'm just going to double click on that. And for my drums, I mostly like to work in MIDI. And that's just because you have so much more flexibility with the little sampler down here. You might find when you're using samples in here, you might need to increase the release to get the full sound playing. Otherwise, it's, you know, if the sustain is down uh, or the note is cutting short and the release isn't up, then you won't hear the full kick drum, for example. Over here, because the note is so long, we were fine, but that's just something to keep in mind. So yeah, we've got a kick on each quarter note. Okay, then we want to get some hats in there. So I've got a few hat loops, single high hats here. So let's first put in the main hat, which is going to be this one. And hi hat goes over here, just like this. And I think what I'm going to do over here is add an additional hi hat here. And just turn down the velocity of that one. I also like to add a little bit of movement in my hi-hats just by setting this to random here and bringing down the um, speed of it so that it doesn't change the pitch halfway through playing the sample. And then we're going to automate the pitch here or modulate the pitch. So you can hear that's way too extreme. We're going to bring that down to like 5%. So now each hit is slightly different. Okay, then we're going to bring in some other hat loops here. I'm going to turn this right down. Okay, we've got some other loops here. I've got a shaker. So I'm going to put that on an audio channel again. I just like to bring the shake in just so I'm like feeling it, it's not too in my face. Okay, we've got another hat here, which is like the open hat. And this is going to be handy because it's such a long sample that we can then automate the decay length on it. And we can get different amounts of energy just by doing that. So I'm going to add that below here. I'm going to copy this MIDI down. And I just want to bring it in at a volume where I can feel it, but again, not. I don't want to like have it in my face. There we go. So now, just for example, we can have like if we had to duplicate this loop, how long is this? Eight bars. So if we have a 16 bar loop here, let's say we want more energy through this half, we can then turn up or bring down the sustain for the first half and the decay. And then in the second half, we open up this decay. And that's going to make the loop feel a bit more energetic. So let's, for the first half, have it down around here. Then here we're going to automate that open a bit. Okay, what else do we have? We have a tom. And the tom is going to be for basically creating a groove on the low end of the track. So I'm going to put it underneath my kick here. And here I'm just going to kind of feel out a rhythm, see what feels nice. So I've got the tom loaded up here. 
And it's also a good idea to tune your tom so that it's in the same key as your track. And I know I'm going to be writing in B minor. So what we can do is just grab an EQ and check where the fundamental is hitting. So if I place on my keyboard here, I'm hitting the uh, letter A, which is actually your C note on your keyboard. I'm going to go up an octave. So here if we uh, play the C4, I want the sample to be hitting at C. But here we can see it's uh, hitting at E. So E, we need to move down to C. So if we just go into the sample here and tune it down, we go down to E flat, then D, then D flat, then C. And here we can see that should be hitting on C now. So now I can just place a note wherever I want, like if I hit it on, place it on E, it's going to play E. If I place it on B, it's going to play B. And because we're in B, I'm going to place it on B. Okay, and now the sample is quite long, so I'm going to bring down the sustain on it. So it's just like a little punch. And I'll come up with some sort of rhythm. I can do, this is quite a typical rhythm. I might break that up a bit and do something like that. Or do something like this. Let's just go with that for now. We can always change it once we have our bass in and the rest of the, the melody. Because typically what happens is you everything should have its place rhythmically. So if you have a melody that isn't quite flowing with the rhythm of this, you can always just come back later and change this around. And then volume-wise, I want this to be quieter than the kick. At the moment it feels like the same volume. Okay, let's go back into our samples. Okay, we've also got this hat loop, which is like, I chose it because it's got a lot of texture to it. So it's more the texture that I want, this kind of noise that it has inside of it. So let's just turn that down and bring it back in so we can just kind of feel it. There we go, and that's just filling it out a bit. Giving it a bit of dirt too. Uh, what else do we have? I think that's most of the drums we've put in now. Okay, so the next thing is the melodic stuff. So the first thing I got is this Atmo loop, which is basically just our drone that I'm going to throw in there and mix it in ever so quietly. We're going to pitch that down to B again, so we're going down, I think it was four, five semitones actually. So we check that on a, we can just use a tuner for this one. Should be playing B, and it is. Okay, let's go back to our pack here, and we start building out the melodic ideas. So. Uh, the first thing I'm going to put down is the uh, ARP, because that's what I probably would have usually started off making. And um, here the MIDI, I've accidentally rendered out the whole thing, but it's really just the first part. So I was messing around with a bunch of different ideas here, and eventually moved all these notes around and came up with this little phrase. And just to show you what it sounds like, I'm just going to load up Diva. I'm probably going to mostly be using Diva uh, through this tutorial as well as some Ableton plugins and I usually when I'm coming up with the sound unless I'm using presets I will just usually start with this stock preset and turn off lag set it to envelope 2 and now we'll hear this okay but that's too much I want to make it quite plucky I'm going to bring down the envelope amount here and also bring down the decay And I want a bit of a longer attack. And to give the sound a bit of release. 
And so I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of these um, these envelopes. These I don't know what they're called. They're like Moog style envelopes. The reason is that the release is uh, attached to the decay. And so if I want to have the decay longer or shorter, but have a long release, I can't really do that. So I'm gonna switch this to analog. Now you can hear that release coming in. It's like this hum. Okay, let's uh, just see how that sounds. So this sound is intended to kind of be in the background of the mix. It's it's just like this really nice harmonic bed that kind of sets the tone for the track. It's not the focus or the lead. So most of the time, you probably won't be paying too much attention to it. So I'm just gonna EQ it a little bit and we'll start bringing in the other sounds. Take out that rumble that's in there. Okay, so before we start refining that sound, I'm just going to bring in the other sounds. And next up uh, is the bass. I'm going to do the bass, and then we'll bring in uh, the lead. So the bass here, you can see we're working B minor, and I think we're going down to the six, and then. I like to set my scale here so we can see we're going down to the 6 and then down to the 4 and then back up to the 6 and then to the 7. By the way, the music theory involved in this creation of this ARP, there was none. I did not think at all about theory. I basically just started off with the bottom row of notes that you, you hear over here. And then just tried adding notes in the scale of B minor, even folding this down to the scale function here. Oh, it's, it's not letting me fold for some reason. I think it's because I got other notes further on down. But yeah, basically just trying by ear, seeing which note sounds nice. And doing the same thing on each note. And just settling on something when it sounds good to my ear. Okay, so for the bass, I'm going to be using Diva again, and we're going to be making like quite a sustained kind of sounding bass. So again, using this, setting it to envelope 2. So this is already sounding pretty close to what I want, but I'm going to be adding in another oscillator because I want a nice bit of growl in there. I'm going to add in a square wave. And that square wave, I'm going to pitch down an octave. So when you hear this... That just gives it a little bit of growl, which is what I want. And then we're going to bring down the envelope amount. Bring up the decay a bit. Can actually, let's try shortening the decay. bringing in some noise, then we can really feel the note changes, uh, which can sound pretty nice. Let's turn off this reverb, try bringing up the sustain a bit, and on this we can bring down the sustain and bring up the decay. So now the note is going to be kind of decaying a bit in volume. And also setting this to mono so that the notes don't overlap. Try a little bit more decay here. to 
in my ear that actually sounds better the longer decay. Maybe less open. And I want to sidechain this to the kick drum. Okay, so for the side chain, I'm just going to bring up this frequency here on the EQ, and that's just so that we are only taking the little clicky part of the kick, and then we get a nice controlled side chain, and we can control using the release depending on how long we want it. Okay, the side chain is too deep now. I'm just going to bring down the ratio. There we go. Maybe give it a bit of look ahead. And that's just to stop any clicking. So I put the look ahead at 10 milliseconds and then the attack at 10 milliseconds to compensate for the look ahead. And that long attack is which is what will get rid of the, the clicking. It's not actually the look ahead that gets rid of the clicking. It's increasing the attack. And the look, look ahead is basically the compensation for pushing that side chain back in time. Okay, I'm not going to worry about automating through this uh, loop that we're setting up. I'm going to save the automation entirely for the arrangement. We're going to do it like basically all in, in one go. So yeah, let's go back to adding some more ideas in here. So we still got the sign lead. Let's bring that in. And the sign lead I'm going to be doing with operator and clues in the name. We're going to be doing using a sine wave. Okay, so the type of sound I'm going for here is, I guess, sine wave, but with a bit of distortion and some down sampling to give it a nice crispy high end. So the sound's not that interesting on its own. Let's give it a bit of a, bring down the sustain and a shorter decay. A little bit of attack. So just to hear this in the mix. Okay, so here if you have a look at the music theory behind this, again, I kind of just did this by ear, starting to put down notes and just seeing, I'm kind of just looking for a mood, a specific, when I, when I feel it, I know what it is, but I don't know how to describe it. So yeah, it's... Um, I'm not, again, thinking too much about theory. I find often when you think, trying to think about theory, you're like, okay, I'm in B minor, I should probably start on B. And then that leads you down this path of all your melodies starting on the tonic of the scale, it becomes predictable and it gets boring for you and it gets boring for your audience. So I find just trying to start on other notes other than the most obvious note can be um, a nice change for everybody. So yeah, here we're starting on the four, the E. We're going up to the five and then down to the three. So we're sticking on these three notes and we're not even going to the B until here. And when we do hit that B, it's actually such a nice sound. It's so relieving. That B sounds like really beautiful to me. So yeah, I think it works nicely. Okay, so for the sound, I'm gonna add a delay because I want this to bounce around a bit. And I like that, but I want it a little bit wider. So I'm just going to unsync the left and the right ever so slightly here by delay, using this delay offset. It's gonna hit the up arrow once. Now it's a bit wider. And now I wanna start making the sound not as clean as it is. So here we can set the, um, the filter mode here to PRD, which is like your Moog filter. And then that enables filter drive and we can use this filter drive to add a bit of grit to it. So it starts sounding a bit more like a square wave. And you'll see when I moved this down, the, the um, distortion got more. Okay, 
And that's because the drive is usually the strongest at the cutoff, and that's because of this resonance that you get here. So yeah, it's really important that you figure out where you want this, or just listen to it and see where it sounds the best. And then maybe a bit less drive. A little bit of reverb on here would be nice too, but just a tiny bit. Um, yeah, so 10% of reverb is fine. For a lot of the times, beginners will go, oh, I want reverb, and they go like this. And that just ends up taking up so much space in the mix, and you can't hear anything, but reverb usually doesn't sound very good. Okay, let's, um, now we're going to add a bit of the dirt. So I love redux for this, especially on sine waves. It can sound really good. Bring down the rate here. And again, just doing this by ear, you'll hear as you go down, the kind of grittiness gets a bit lower down frequency-wise. Here it's like really high pitch. Until it starts like really miss messing with the pitch. Yeah, this sounds the best to me. And you can try playing with like jitter. Sometimes it sounds nice, but it, in this case it doesn't work for me. And I also like to try bringing down this uh, bit crushing. Here it's adding just a little bit of... A little bit of dirt to it, you can just hear it subtly. Uh, but that sounds good to me. And you can try bringing down the dry wet, mixing it in as loud as you want the um, redux to be. I think about there sounds good. Okay, and then we've got one more element before we start arranging this idea. And that is, where is it? It was the pads. So this is just to add a little bit of space to the sound. And again, we're going to be grabbing Diva. I'm just going to steal it from here. And for this, I'm going to be using, um, where is it? Circle Volume 2. Uh, there's a pad that I really like that I actually use quite a lot from here. Felt, that's the one. And that sounds like this. Okay, so yeah, let's hear that in the mix. Oh, there's one thing we need to do here. Um, this pad is actually detuned. So you can see here it's got the um, set to five. Just double click on that and it's gonna go back. And that sounds much better now. That detuning kind of takes it out of pitch, specifically when you're using chords too. So let's just mix that down. And take out a bit of the uh, mids. Okay, so now we've pretty much got all the elements that I want to use. And I think I'm going to start arranging the track next. Okay, so... When I think about the arrangement, I like to try and think what type of song this is going to be, because the arrangement can actually really take it into different spaces depending on what you want to do with the song. Like, you got to think, is it going to be um, a more clubby, dancey kind of 
sung? Is it intended for more like streaming? Do you want it to be like short and cut to the chase? Um, are you planning to add vocals to it? Uh, just yeah, think about that. And I think when I think about this track, I'm imagining it to be like quite a. I want it to be a slightly more dancey kind of track, so I'm going to go for more of a, a longer arrangement that's going to be focused a lot more on like automation instead of doing like really short, exciting drop with a you know like euphoric breakdown and then another 16 bar drop. I'd rather have kind of a beat that goes all the way through the track and we're slowly bringing stuff in and out and uh, arranging it. That's just more exciting for me, so that's the sort of sound I'm going to go for here or sort of arrangement. And I'm going to kind of feel my way through this arrangement, but if you have no clue about arrangements, I recommend dragging in a reference track and copying that arrangement. So checking where they're putting the kick, when they're taking the kick out, where the breakdowns are, things like that, just making markers and notes and kind of copying it. But I sort of already have a intuition for this kind of arrangement. So yeah, let's let's get started. So I'm going to just take this whole loop and kind of move it over to the right by highlighting a section here and hitting Control I. Uh, I want to do that a few times just so it's out of the way and I have all the space over here to arrange. How much space do we have here? We have four minutes of arrangement space. Okay, so we're going to start on the kick drum. I'm just going to copy that over here. And I want to just start with drums, only drums for now. So what I want is that textured loop, and I'm actually going to label stuff to make it more obvious what it is, because at the moment I can just see PMA, PML DPV7. So let's just name this kick tom, uh, what's this? I'm going to call that offbeat hat, H long. hat loop. Shaker, and then we've got, I'm going to call this texture hats. And that is going to be our drone. And then we've got up, bass, uh, lead, and pad. Okay, so now it's a lot easier to work with. Okay, so to start out, I want this texture in there. And I think I want the open hat to let's make this open hat a little more interesting. I'm gonna add um, a delay on this. I actually learned this by going through Tim Engelhart's project file, which is also on PML. And in his project, he has this open hat that kind of, I think he uses a filter delay, or I can't remember which delay he uses. I use just the normal delay. But if you bring down the rate here, set it to time and make it really short, uh, you can start getting some cool tails on the hat. Let's bring down the dry wet. Let's try ping pong. There we go, so now it sounds like this. And we can add some very slight um, modulations to keep this interesting, because remember I said I want to make this like a more of like a dancey kind of track. So we've got to make what we have, you know, we don't have a whole lot of elements here. I want to make them last really long and keep them interesting. So I'm going to be doing lots of little modulations and automation. So here, I think what we can do is maybe bring this delay in and out and ever so slightly change the time, the timing of this to add these little pitchy effects. Let's just hear this. can hear how they're like opening, um, going up and down in pitch when I shift that. So LFO is a great tool in, in uh, Ableton for this. And we can map it to different features. So I click map and then map it to dry and wet. And then you have this knob going up and down, but that's way too much. So let's just bring down the range that this happens in. I'm gonna make this, I think the highest I had it, we just unmap it. Oh. I think between like 13 and 
23 sounds good to me. So let's set that to 13 and that to 23. And now if I map that, Okay, now I don't want it being so predictable and just moving up and down because then again it's gonna it's gonna repetitive. So I want to make it I want to break that repetition by using a random alpha. Um, so here you can see the amount jumping around. Let's bring up the rate so it changes a lot a lot faster. Okay, then I want to use another LFO to change the timing of it so it's even more unpredictable. And for this, let's let's slow this LFO down and smooth it out. Add some smoothing so the, the switch is a bit slower and we get those nice pitch effects. And here yeah, I'm gonna map it to this. So we must remember it sounded good at 60 milliseconds. So we wanna be moving around 60 milliseconds. So if I just bring up the lower amount here till it gets to around, see where we are. That's too much. We're going to bring down the amounts here just until we get to around 60. It's going up to 90. So that means we need to bring this down to maybe like 39. Let's see. So now it's going between 40 and 27. Maybe let's bring that up to about 38 and this to like 41. And uh, let's just listen to it. Cool, now we've got some movement in that hat. And what might also be cool is doing something like adding a reverb and bring that in every once in a while. So I'm just going to duplicate this and map it to the reverb. And here I'm going to bring the reverb down to like 10, or let's bring it down to like 3%, and then the upper amount to 10%. Bring down the size, bring up the decay. Okay, so now I've got a lot of movement in that hat and we don't really have to worry about it that much. It's not gonna add to the repetitiveness. Now it's kind of like breaking the repetition. And I wanna do that for as many elements as possible, adding automation. I think I forgot to add a clap to this loop. Let me just double check. This clap is like another one that you can really automate and modulate a lot. I don't think I added a clap, but we can add one in where we see fit. I'm not going to do it right now. Okay, so I think that's enough to like start off the song. I think eight bars in we can start bringing in another element. So maybe um, maybe the tom can come in here. Having a little change every eight bars I think is is good. And I'm kind of imagining the shaker slowly fading in. I don't want it to just drop in over there. I want it to fade in, say, from here to over here. That's how long it takes for the shaker to fade in. Let's grab a utility, fade that in. Now that that's faded in, maybe we can bring in this hat loop too. I also want to start fading in some tonal stuff. So I think that drone is the first thing I would bring in and maybe have that fading in right from the intro. For that, I'm going to use, I think I'm just going to use a filter. So that's ever, it's like really slightly there. You can't hear it unless you like really crank up your volume. Super subtle. And then around here, I'll start fading, the, opening this up.
and I think at this marker, so let's let's just name these. So we've got DJ intro, and this is another bit where DJ can mix in. And then over here is where we have the intro intro. So I think this is where we can start introducing something a bit more melodic. And before I do that, I want to just take out the bass from the kick just to signal a change. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is bring down the sustain instead of using a filter. Just for the last few kicks. And then I'm imagining taking out the bass from the kick over here for like eight bars and doing a little build, a little build up here and then dropping into the bass. So let's add, just add a locator and write bass. And I'm going to just run this kick across and all these other elements. And I think when we bring in the bass, we can maybe take out this atmosphere here because what you'll hear is that should feel pretty good. I think in my head it sounds good. I haven't tried it yet. So I think it'll sound, it'll work nicely when we've got the ARP in there and maybe some effects like a noise sweep or something. I think I have effects in here. Yes. So if we put the effect here at the bottom, turn that right down. I'm going to add a little bit of reverb to that. I want a nice bright and long reverb for that. And I don't want all that mid-range in there. Okay, now that we've got the bass there, I think the first element to introduce is this harp, and we want to start probably fading that in through the intro. So let's bring that in using this envelope amount. I was wrong about that. I think the Atmos loop needs, needs to stay in there. But we also need to kind of work on this build. I'm going to call this a build. And I think what I want to do here is maybe take out some of the bass from the tom too. I'm just going to use this and Kind of sweep that up. And I feel like we need some different percussion in there. Like maybe we can bring in this long open hat, put that over there. Maybe turn up the shaker a little bit. Let's see. And we need to open this up a little bit. And 
maybe what we can do with that hat is start bringing up the amount of this delay so it gets a bit more intense. We can automate that, I think. Just trying to think. I want to increase the amount of the delay and then kind of dial it back a bit. Maybe what I can do is um, use the filter. Yeah, I think that'll work. So maybe through here we can have this filter open. And then open it up again through here. And then close it. Maybe bring that up again every once in a while. this open hat, maybe make that a bit longer. Through here. Okay, but we can do a lot more automation of this up. that. Bring that down a bit. Yeah, there's some other stuff that we can probably automate here, like the uh, decay and the attack. So I'm just going to click on those. What about another oscillator? Yeah, we can probably automate that in there. What about some panning or something on this to kind of move it around? Like, uh, I can use random pan. Okay, um, so that's moving along. Let's automate the other parameters. So here we've got attack, add that into a new lane. And maybe we can do something like this right before the drop. Always 
try playing with the decay too. Okay. Try bringing this down a bit. Yes, that's a nice bit of automation on that ARP. I think this build can still use some more work. It's not really building up. It doesn't tell us that something's really going to happen. I think what we can do is put all of the drums into a group, do something with reverb, like push these all behind a reverb, take out the low end, and the, just want to get the high end in there. Yeah, so maybe bring that that in. And maybe like a little bit of a, a fill over there. We could even take out this tom and just use the tom to do like a very simple fill. So what if we took out the tom over there? Maybe in the last bar here we can do something with this, like a... Uh... Yeah, something like that. Maybe moving up or something. So this is like... Maybe we can bring in the pad over here. And maybe uh, do something else here so we can go just walk out. Okay, so let's see. I kind of feel like some more effects and stuff are needed to be sprinkled around but uh, I first want to get like the main meat of the track down before we add all the details and so I'm just going to add the logo and say pad I think around here is where I want to pull back on the bass again and 
start introducing our lead idea, which we carry into the second part. So let's just, we're going to call this a break, but it's not going to be your typical like melodic house break where everything cuts out and then it's like some euphoric melodic section. It's just going to be maybe dropping out the kick or taking out just the bass from the kick and the tom. So let's just see how that sounds. Maybe if we drag that across there for a minute and then maybe after a minute we have like another build here and then our drop. Let's just call this build. So maybe we can drop out that long open hat there. Keep everything else in there. We can also start like introducing some other drums. Let's keep the drone in there. And this up, I'm going to keep it going, but I'm going to start like taking down the um, filter. Uh, let me just make sure to take out the low end here from the drums. So this time I'm actually going to use the filter. Let's get that effect in there. Maybe I'll take out the tom, let's see. Actually sounds nice when I take out that hat. Bass is something we haven't really automated just yet. I think we can quick, quickly do that to bring some life into it. Maybe when we drop in, we don't want that to be at 50 here. Maybe it should only go up to 50 over there. So let's see. Maybe like 25. We can do a little bit of maybe cutoff automation. So let's say on this this one we can open this up a bit.
Okay, we want to keep on building this. I think I'm going to take out the kick drum and start doing like a snare build with everything in here. Probably want to bring in a little bit of a sweep here. Okay, so I want to sweep into a, kind of like a snare roll build up thing. See if there are any snares in here. Just looking for the right one for this build. I think something like that. Or like that, that's probably more appropriate. Kind of like a drum machine style uh, snare. Let's get that in there and I'm just going to make a MIDI note. And we're gonna be working on 16ths here, like this. Okay, I'm gonna bring down the sustain. And again, do a bit of modulation to make it a bit more human. So we're doing the pitch modulation again. And a little bit of panning. Now I just want to set that volume right. Maybe increase the decay towards the end. Okay, let's fade that in. The filter. out this lead. I think we can open it up pretty much all the way. Or open it up here. Yeah, that's that might work. Again, a bit of a sweep. And then we're going to kind of drop into the full loop. Let's just drag that across there. Okay, but we need our low end back in. Okay, but we need also our ARP to come back in. So maybe we just grab this automation, let's see. Okay, so now the issue is you get used to this very fast 16th note rhythm, uh, but it doesn't carry through into here. Then it goes back to the eighth note rhythm, and that's why the drop doesn't feel satisfying. But also the lead and the ARP is a bit too much together. Gonna do this. 
Okay, so let's add another hat loop. I'm actually going to make one with one shot to match the energy of this. So a good way to actually do this is to have something to visualize it so that you are matching the energy going into the drop. So for example, we take Span, which is a free plugin, and we can just check out. I've put it on the master. We can see exactly what sort of frequencies we have right before we hit the drop and how loud they are. So say we're hitting about 48, minus 48 dB. at about eight kilohertz. And then when we drop into here, we need to have that sort of energy on the 16th notes. At least in theory, that should give us the energy that we need to make that drop kind of hit hard. Where am I? It is D premium volume seven. Okay, let's get another hi-hat. So I'm actually gonna keep this open and look at span and see what has some nice energy there. All right not playing through span. I'm just going to use my ears and see. I just want something with a lot of high end. I feel like that'll work. So to make sure I'm not already using this hat because then it will phase. Which one is that? Hat 10? Okay, no I'm not. And now I want a hat on each 16th. Just taking a bit of attack in there to take out the harshness of the attack. And I'm just going to mix it in before I start playing with the sequencing and everything, the modulation. Okay, let's bring down the sustain. Okay, let's also now EQ this. I can probably turn up this hat to go with it, but it, sorry, let me just focus on this quick. Okay, so it's straight down the middle. I want to add a bit more randomness to this again. Oops, that is the wrong. Wrong one. It's this one. You can also add a little bit of bounce to this. Um, let me just consolidate that and add a little bit of velocity movement. Leave that. Maybe we can add some little hat rolls on the thirty second notes, like Okay, so the hi-hats need a lot more energy in them. So here we can um, turn this up, I think. I'll just use the volume here. Let's get another hat and layer it with this open one. I'm just going to delete the MIDI from here. Let's 
Maybe something like that. I think the kick needs a bit of EQ too, just to give it some punch in the low end. Here we can turn up the this hat loop. I think this hat is too open now. Let's bring down the decay a bit. We're getting there. I'm going to add another loop. Let's check out. Yeah, maybe something like that. And let's try that too. Where's our open hat? I'm going to try opening up that decay bit. Maybe what we can do is bring in a clap on this to add some proper energy to it. bit of snap from the kick. Okay, so now what did I say? Clap time. So I'm really developing the drums and it seems like a lot going from from there into uh, into here with all of this, these added hats, but we've got this whole breakdown to kind of bring in more hats and more drums and uh, also the build. So I want to just really like develop the drop before I go back into the build and, and work on that. So now let's go in and grab a clap. It feels like it's gonna have a nice bite on it. Okay, so I like this, but I want to bring down the sustain on that reverb a bit. Maybe layer it with another clap. See how that sounds. That 
has like a little fill in there. That could work. Putting that over there. Let's see. Yeah, it has a nice bit of detail in there. I think that clap is something we could start bringing in through here, maybe. this arp to creep too much up because it's starting to confuse the, the lead. I think we can still do quite a lot with this lead like in terms of automating and adding effects and stuff to it. So I'm just going to bring down this depth, keep it a bit more chilled. <laughs> Maybe we can just take a bass hit and put it here and kind of let it fade out. Take this base and just delete that. Filter that out a bit. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of other stuff here. Let's see what we can bring in. We can probably play with our pads here and maybe just build some tension with them. Let's see. We do something like this. And then bring in like a fifth on top of that. And filter that in too. Start playing with the reverb here.
Okay, so with the bass, I think we can bring up the free overall frequency on this here to really let this hit hard here. Feel how this breakdown flows from here through there and into the drop, and then I can make more decisions about what to do with the breakdown. Yeah, that's a long That's a long bit of break. I think we can probably just delete that whole section. I'm just going to hit control shift delete and that shortens that breakdown a little bit. And I feel like we definitely need something coming in here that keeps the listener interested. And I think what we can do is instead of adding like another main element, just do something with the high end. So maybe like duplicating this pad and choosing a different pad sound. Um, let's see. I feel like that could be cool with uh, a whole lot of space in it. I'm going to add another reverb to this. I'm just going to make it a huge reverb. We don't need that in there. Yeah, something like that where we start walking down. Maybe repeating this idea. Maybe an octave higher. (laughs) 
something changes here, oh, it drops down. There we go. like that. I, don't, I think that's once is enough over there. And maybe we can do something else that's cool over here. Maybe like a cool little arpeggio thing, you know, like these rate automated arpeggios. Let's see, doing like a big B minor chord. B minor ninth or whatever it's called. And let's use let's use Diva again. Actually I'm just gonna steal this one. Maybe we can find a cool patch. I'm just gonna throw an ARP on there. And I'm gonna turn off sync. And I just want to be able to hear this. Let's find a different patch here. Let's go for maybe the plucks. That one's got a nice punch to it. So I kind of just want this to be an effect rather than like a main element. Maybe, but um, I'm just going to use echo actually. A bit of reverb on it, ping pong, a bunch of feedback. And then I'm going to use another reverb to fade it out, fade to gray. Something like that. Maybe um, fade that in too. Just go. that. Hey, move this over here.
Yeah, I don't like that. If we change the baseline or something there. Oh, I think this could be cool here, actually. Play that again there. Use this as a riser. Fade this kick out. Feel this out again. Crazy. I quite like it. The only problem is it's fighting with the sign lead of it. If 
feel like what we could maybe do here is bring in the sine lead later on over here and over here just kind of loop a little section. This bit, I don't know. could be cool. And then maybe develop this ARP idea, not the ARP, the uh, lead. we add a different delay to it to kind of get it going a bit faster. Like uh, one of these.
Definitely needs like a nice big effect. White noise. See if there's any white noise effects. In fact, we've got the white noise there. We can just reuse it in a different way. So I can reverse that. Just turn off warping. Take the same effect. I think I just went. Something like that. Maybe with a bit of bounce in it. Um, let's grab that. Okay, let's uh, keep this going. So what I'm going to do is kind of mark this off and we've kind of come in halfway through a 16 bar section. So now the dark and the light grid pattern is a bit messed up. So you can fix that by just adding a time signature change, dragging it over there. And now we've got these four dark and four light patterns again, and that makes it easier to see. So I think over here, I can just write cool down. Maybe start filtering this lead out in the cooldown. We've got this pad in the breakdown that we haven't used.
and probably just start fading that out. this over there to kind of create the outro. fading this out again. I'm just going to use my effects again over here. So what we can probably do here is take out the bass. start closing down this open hi-hat. Isn't uh, the long one I mean? Okay, I want to just feel out what we've done so far. It's probably a bunch of stuff I want to still change. Probably also need to take a little break from this. Uh, let me just write outro here and DJ outro. Uh, let me first save what we've done.
there. That doesn't work. It's like the lead just disappears. I don't think this ARP should be coming back in. I think we should just be working towards fading out completely now. This could just be the DJ outro, the section, and I could do this filter thingy here. Yeah, I think we're almost there. I think what's required now is for me to take a break from this, sleep on it, and then come back in the morning and do some final changes. Cool. Okay, yeah, we're back now, and I've had a break. I've slept on this track, and I love taking breaks from things and coming back to them because you can just immediately hear all the issues and... Hopefully we can fix them. So I've already had a, a listen through, so I'm not going to do a full playthrough again. And there's some immediate things that I want to change. The first thing, well, let me actually just make notes so that you know where I want to change stuff. So I'm just putting a locator and I'm going to say um, bass improve. And when I say improve the bass, what I mean is the sound of the bass. <music> kind of just disappears because of that envelope is too short and so I think we just need to bring up the sustain on that so that's a pretty easy fix and what I'm thinking is maybe adding one or two bass shots to kind of like keep the low end feeling nice and full and also it might improve the groove then we've got here in the breakdown we've got this element here so we've got this pad that plays this melody. I love it. I think it sounds great. And then we've got the repetition over here. And, and we have this little bubbly synth that comes in. But the problem is these two are fighting for attention. So I think the solution here is to remove that and 
move this whole thing forward. So I'll just drag this here over there. So now if we just listen to that breakdown. continue this melody instead of going back to that. So here I'm kind of Still not quite feeling this drop, and I want to fix that. I think we could have the LFO re trigger and do this kind of how it sounds over here, kind of re trigger it here, maybe fully open this up. Let's see how that sounds. Now the problem is this, this lead is fighting for attention. So I wonder if we drop this lead from here. Let's see how that sounds. That might work, might not. I think what we might do here is take this and instead of doing that little bump up because that kind of tells us that we're going to lead back into the sequence again and so it feels incomplete. So let's rather start fading this out maybe with our reverb over here. Let's see how that sounds. Take this and I'll just bring that up. Oops. of works to do that, to fade this out and have that LFO be the kind of climax and then we bring this sign lead back in. Let's fill that out. I think maybe starting to filter this down is a good idea and then filter it back up as we go through here. this filter down, I mean open this reverb up over this whole section.
still doesn't feel right to me. sequence because it's playing too many notes. No, I want it to be the same sequence as this one. I'll just copy that across. So I think this is almost working. I'm happy with that now. Let's go back to this bass and just fix that. So it's just a pretty simple issue here, I think. The sustain needs to just come up a bit more. And the sustain here. Maybe the um, modulation depth can come up a bit. Yeah, yeah, that's better. But I wonder if we can add some little bass hits in there, like I said. Oh, and one more thing I was thinking is that through like this section, Some little like subtle pads in the high end just to fill out that high end a bit. Yeah, so let's do that both those things quickly. Let's see, maybe we can find uh, 
some sort of punchy little bass sound, just like little one shots basically. Uh, let's go in here to circle volume two. That's interesting, so let's see how it sounds in the mix. It works, but let's just try some other ones. Oh, I really like that one. I think I'm going to go to that one. Maybe with a bit of reverb on it. Yeah, that's got some really cool movement on it. That's playing the wrong note over there. Uh, we need to go down to the E. Hopefully that sounds nice. Yeah, I like that. I wonder if this would sound better with like a bit of delay on it. Take out some of the low end. going to filter out some of the high end from here and then we can open it up like over here shot. I might just copy this whole entire chain and just choose a different sound. And here we can do oh, add variation, I mean. Maybe on, on the, one of these notes. So uh, what is this? Probably the A over here. Let's just check. Yeah, it goes to A. something a bit more plucky. That's cool. I wonder if we open that and 
Maybe saturate it a bit. Uh, let's see how it sounds at the end. Uh, I think overdrive. I really want to bring out the like, subtle harmonics.
Okay. Now I think some cool little effects here could be in order. Let's see if we have some. I think I saw some cool effects in here. Effects loops. Do we want that? Stuff like that, yeah. So I'm just going to start layering these under here, make a few new channels, and let's just check out the intro. Maybe not in the intro. Maybe these cool effects only start like around here. Maybe where those bass hits aren't landing. See here, maybe I can go like um, just warp that in time. Don't like how it lands like on the downbeat, maybe shift it over into the next sixteenth, yeah. some other oh, I like that the end of that is cool let's grab that and make sure that it's in time what was it 123 cool and let's just see Yeah, that's pretty cool. A big hit. Where was it? Is it that one? Yeah, that could be... Could sound cool there, I think. Let's try that. I wonder if that can be like the start. I think here we can have some variation. So we've got that hit there, maybe we replace that with something else. <laughs> like that. Could be in a similar position. Set to one one twenty six. Maybe not like that, just this little hit. The delay. And let's push it forward to 16th for some groove. So what about in this one we pitch this down minus 12 let's see
problem is this is landing on we've got effects going over those bases so we're not actually hearing them so it might make more sense to shift this like over there or even put it over there or something pretty cool don't want to make it overly complex because at the moment I think it's still in a place where it could kind of work in a club there's moments where there's maybe too much going on but a lot of it feels kind of almost in the right place I think so yeah I think I'm gonna leave it there and put a quick limiter just on the on the master so that we can kind of push up the volume to its peak and then I'm gonna mute my sound and play it through and uh, yeah, see how it turned out. Um, so yeah, let's just push this. OK, 
Okay, so yeah, I'm not going to do any more talking now. Let's, I think, play this full thing through and see what we have.
Okay, so now that we've got the instrumental down, I think we can try and add some vocals in here. Um, there's a new pack by PML called Vocals Volume 2, and I've picked out two phrases that I think will fit nicely in track. Feel it in my bones, am I high enough? This one. I wanna know. And that one. So yeah, these are actually in a different key. They're in D minor, so we have to pitch them down, but they sound actually pretty cool when they pitch down. So let's just drag this in here and make sure that it's in time. So we just need to warp it to 120. And then if we pitch that down three semitones, we get. Okay, so our track is pretty long and I think what we can do is spread out these vocals and make it like last twice as long. So basically doing cuts over here and then putting one over there and one, hang on, let's do this. There, there, and there. Okay, and sorry, there, that's where I wanted it. So now we just need to put out some fades over here and we can drag these back to make sure we're getting the full word in there. And now, so I think we can um just put a delay on there to kind of not really fill in the gaps because there's quite a lot of interesting stuff happening between them, but I just think it'll make it a little more ethereal, which works for this track. So I'm just gonna bring up the feedback quite high and I'm bringing, putting on ping pong, bringing down the D, the dry wet, and then also bringing down the filter. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, so that's that's one phrase and I we've got another one and I feel like it'll also work in there but we got to try and think how can we make two phrases last the entire song I mean they don't have to be all over the entire song but it does need to have some sort of cohesiveness to it from a vocal standpoint so this works as kind of like a verse and I feel like that could be repeated so let's figure out where this can fit Definitely not over here. Here it's a bit too busy with the lead. Maybe here. And then I think in the breakdown we can have it somewhere. I wonder, yeah. In my bones, am I enough? Okay, I feel like it's conflicting a little bit with this lead, so what about just here and we miss out that that one?
Maybe we can use, instead of doing that, we can use this and kind of repeat that here on the 69. Let's see. That Just like repeat a little chop from there or something. No. I just don't want it to take away from this little lead. That's the issue. Take this frozen re delay that I just done and just start recording that in. And maybe we can use that sort of like an effect. Just keeps on carrying through. There is nothing else when we intertwine. Okay, I think that's enough. Just turn off that. Bring this back down. So I'm going to take that and then loop just this section. Loop that and then drag it through here. And then maybe filter it in. that over there again. Let's keep that going through there. Maybe we can play the full thing over there. So now we've got it in three places. Let's 
do this. And keep building this layer. So I think that works through there. So yeah, we, we have the other vocal. So let's bring that into, um, let's see where that can fit. I think this would be good over here. Okay, we just need to warp that into time, 120, and we'll just go down three. Okay, let's do that again where we split them and just make them last through here. And then I think maybe here we can add this to the outro here. Let's just hear this full verse now and see if it all makes sense.
No, I think just repeating that phrase will, will work. Through here. Let's delete that and under that. I think that works nice. I'm just trying to think. Bringing this vocal in, is it just going to come straight in on the on the bass here? Or am I going to hint at it through the intro? Maybe we can use this and kind of build up to the vocal a little bit. Yeah, I think um, I'm happy with that. That was a nice quick flow. So yeah, let's let's play it through. I don't think the vocals need crazy effects. I think there's enough detail throughout the track with all the other little cool effects that we have going. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. And we've been going for quite a while now. I don't want the video to be like six hours long. So yeah, but just so you know, we could probably put more attention to these vocals, adding like weird delays and different reverbs and stuff to, to kind of make it stand out more. But yeah, I think for what it is, it's sounding pretty solid. So let's play it through and just check it out. Right, three, two, one.
Cool. Quite happy with that. I think it turned out great. All right, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this and you like how it turned out, you can get all the sounds, Deep Premium Volume 7, and it is also Vocal Pack Volume 2. I'm not sure when it's out. It might be out now, might not be. But yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Feel it in my bones, in my